So one of the impacts of human activity on the environment is through deforestation. Now deforestation can be defined as the removal of trees or the felling of trees in an unsustainable way. So imagine this large area of a forest is the trees are cut down. Well, if the trees are not replanted and if they don't regrow, then obviously it's unsustainable because the forest is being um, damaged and destroyed over time. So what are some of the reasons for deforestation? Well, we know there's a high demand for timber as a construction material. Uh, we also know that wood is needed as a fuel. So it's a type of biofuel. Now, when uh, wood is burnt, obviously that is going to um, increase the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. We also know wood is needed to make paper and cardboard packaging. And it's also to clear the land for agricultural farming. So this one, number four here, is, is a big issue in deforestation. The, the removal or the felling of trees clears big areas of land, not only for animal farming, but also for crop farming. Now, we also know deforestation is um, quite often used to improve transport infrastructure. So it's a way of clearing trees and, and forest land to make way for new highways, new motorways. Now, we also know that certain forests are targeted because um, the, the trees have high value. So things like teak and mahogany, quite often these trees will be chopped down because they, they can be used to build um, furniture. So what are some of the consequences of deforestation then? Well, th there's three main ideas that we're going to talk about. The first of these, idea number one, is global climate change. Now, we know if um, large numbers of trees are cut down or felled in an area of land, such as the picture beneath on the left, less carbon dioxide is actually going to be removed from the atmosphere because we know plants normally photosynthesize and they take in through gas exchange carbon dioxide and they fix this and um, that's going to reduce the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. So if there's less trees available, less photosynthesis occurs and so there's a higher concentration of CO2 in the, uh, in the atmosphere. Now we know CO2 is a greenhouse gas and it does help to reflect infrared light back to the Earth's surface so it reflects this light that can reheat the Earth's surface uh, resulting in increased temperatures. Now what can happen to the felled trees which also increases the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere? So not only is there a lack of photosynthesis to absorb the carbon dioxide but we also know that a large number of the trees that are chopped down will end up being burnt. Now the burning of trees as a, as a biofuel uh, releases carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Now, as we've just said, CO2 is a greenhouse gas and it does reflect infrared light back to the Earth's surface, which also heats up the Earth's surface. Now, we also know that machines and trucks are used. Now, the machines to, to chop down the trees in the first place and the trucks to then carry the timber to where it's needed. Now, because the machines and the trucks use petrol and diesel, when that biofuel is, is burnt and combusted, it's also going to release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So there's a number of ideas here about increasing carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. One is a lack of photosynthesis. One is that the wood from the trees is burnt, which releases CO2. Another is that the machines and the trucks are used um, to, to chop the trees down, transport them, and they use diesel and petrol, which also releases CO2 into the atmosphere. The, the third um, idea is that a lot of the remnants, so we look at the picture on the bottom right, a lot of these um, kind of vegetation remnants, they get decomposed by microorganisms. So these microorganisms are called saprophytes, like bacteria and some species of fung fungus. Now, these um, saprophytes have extracellular digestion, but they do obviously absorb glucose and they respire that glucose. through So through cellular respiration, the saprophytes do also release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere, which contributes to the, the higher CO2 concentrations. Now, what other processes might increase the con concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere as an indirect consequence of deforestation? So the other ideas are more of a direct consequence, but what could be an indirect consequence of deforestation? Well, we know animal agriculture so if we've got large areas of forest that have been chopped down, 
Well, that land quite often is going to be used for um, uh, animal agriculture, so raising cows for, for the meat industry and the dairy industry. Now, we know cows release methane as a waste gas. Now, methane, very much like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, is a greenhouse gas. So that also helps to reflect infrared light back to the Earth's surface, and that contributes to the heating up of the Earth's surface and, and therefore uh, contributes to climate change. Now, also, any forest that has been cleared away, if it is used for motorways and, and highways, well, we know um, exhaust fumes from the cars and the vehicles that use the highways they release carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and also nit nitric oxide, or nitrous oxide, sorry. And again, these are greenhouse gases, very much like the methane that we just mentioned. So they help to reflect the infrared light also back to the Earth's surface. Now, the second idea about deforestation uh, and the consequence of deforestation is the destruction of habitats. So what effect does deforestation and the destruction of habitats have on the biodiversity? OK, and why is this a particular issue in tropical rainforests? So you might want to define biodiversity to start with. It's the number of species. So we put the number of species. And the number of. The number of individuals of each species within a defined area. So biodiversity is the number of different species and the number of individuals of each species within a defined area. And that is going to decrease through deforestation because of the destruction of habitats, the second consequence. So 50% of the Earth's uh, species live in rainforests. So they're very, very, very highly biodiverse. Now, loss of these uh, different habitats is very, very damaging to global biodiversity. And there's probably many different species of plants that we've yet to actually identify within these rainforest uh, ecosystems. Now, one issue with this is a lot of medications and medicines originate from um, these different types of tropical plants. So it might be a loss of undiscovered um, medicinal properties or, or potential medicines. Now, if we have a quick look at this exam question, um, it shows an area about 50 kilometers squared. And the question states, logging is the removal of mature trees from a forest. The diagram shows a method of sustainable logging this time. So we said deforestation by definition is normally unsustainable if the trees are not replanted or there's no regrowth. But this time the question is about sustainable log logging. Uh, each of the sectors one to nine is logged in sequence and the old growth area so that's this old growth area in, in the center, is never felled. Felling in each section takes about 35 years. Okay, so, so what's this question all about? And why would these loggers um, chop down the trees in such a manner? So what they've done is in section number one, and this takes 35 years, they've chopped down all the trees here, so 35 years. Once all these trees have been chopped down, they then start to fell or chop down all the trees in seg segment number two. And that takes another 35 years. And then segment number three is the next one here, etc., etc. Segment number four will be here. So the idea is any animals that live within these different habitats in sector number one, when these trees start to be chopped down, these animals can actually migrate and they can either migrate into the adjacent segments here. Or they can uh, migrate into the old growth uh, in the center of the area. Now, the habitats in this case in segment number six and also segment number five will be the same as in segment number one. 
So these animals that migrate, and they might be birds or mammals or insects, for example, when they migrate into segment number five and number six, they find identical habitats where they can survive. So it prevents habitat loss because there's still habitats available for these different uh, organisms. Now, when segment number two is then felled, over here on the left, the, uh, the animals that are in this segment can then also migrate into segment number seven or maybe into segment number six. Now, after a certain number of years, once all the trees have been cut down, the animals that are have migrated sorry, into these adjacent segments, they can actually start to repopulate uh, segments number one and number two when the vegetation starts to reemerge. So imagine there's replanting of trees in these segments that have been cut down. Well, if there's new vegetation, new trees, there's new habitats that these organisms can then repopulate. So the third consequence of deforestation, number three, is soil erosion. So we've had two consequences already. The first one being the increase in CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere because of deforestation. So there's a lack of photosynthesis uh, because the trees have been removed. Um, there's decomposition of dead plant material, vegetation, and there's also the machines that are used to cut the trees down as well as the wood being burned. Now, the second consequence of deforestation was the loss of habitats. Uh, the third one is soil erosion. So if we remove um, the topsoil, then the soil becomes very, very unfertile. And that's because the topsoil tends to contain a high concentration of nutrients. Now, we know nutrients can be things like uh, nitrate ions that supply nitrogen. They can be phosphate ions that supply phosphorus. So we know nitrogen is needed to build uh, molecules in the plants, such as uh, nucleotides, the, the subunits of nucleic acids. They used to build amino acids. They used to build chlorophyll. They all contain nitrogen. Phosphorus as part of phosphate ions is used to build uh, nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA. It's used to build the sugar phosphate backbone of these molecules. Uh, it's also needed in some proteins and to make nucleotides such as ATP, uh, as well as things like phospholipids. So why is there an increased soil erosion if trees are removed from an area? Well, we know removal of trees on higher slopes can lead to lowland flooding after heavy rainfall. Now, the topsoil in the sloped area can also be swept away by the rain. So imagine you had a slope such as this, and there's trees at the top, highlands, on the slopes, and also the lowland here. So removal of trees on the higher slopes can lead to the lowland flooding. Now, these trees have root systems so we know the roots anchor the trees into the soil, very extensive root systems. So if these trees are felled on the top of the slope here, there's no root systems to absorb the water from the soil. So heavy rainfall will cause flooding of lowland areas because there's no root systems to absorb the, uh, the water after rainfall. Now, the topsoil in the sloped area is also going to be eroded and swept away to lowland areas. Now, as the topsoil contains these nitrates that we said uh, and phosphates and other nutrients, uh, the area becomes very, very um, unfertile. So the topsoil is a particular issue because topsoil, as we just said, is very, very fertile. Lots of different mineral ions. Now, the soil beneath the topsoil, once that's been eroded away, is much less suitable for crop growth. So um, the area is not going to be uh, very good for being able to grow different crops. So we've talked about the three main consequences of deforestation then, but there is actually a fourth consequence that you might want to reference. Now, this is all about the soil quality um, available for plant growth. So deforestation can actually have a negative impact on soil quality. So the first idea that we're going to talk about is evaporation rates versus transpiration rates. Now, evaporation is water, liquid water in the soil being returned to the atmosphere as water vapor. And this is actually quite slow. So water is returned back to the atmosphere 
quite slowly through evaporation. Now transpiration is liquid water in the leaves, so the air chambers of the, uh, the leaves of plants uh, back to the atmosphere or back to the air uh, as water vapour. Now actually the rates of transpiration are actually quite quick, quite fast. So when you've got lots of plants and trees available, it means water is actually returned to the atmosphere, which allows suitable rainfall. However, the slow evaporation rates mean less water is actually being returned to the atmosphere over time, and therefore there's actually going to be a lower overall rainfall. Now that can have a, a negative impact because if there's lower rainfall, it means local areas surrounding the deforest uh, region can uh, undergo desertification and that means the formation of deserts okay so more evaporation from soil because there's a lack of trees and less transpiration because of the lack of trees so evaporation like we said returns water more slowly to the atmosphere compared to transpiration this leads to the reduced total local rainfall and therefore accelerates formation of desert land. Now, the second uh, knock on effect is that there's less oxygen in the soil if you've got um, deforestation. So as the soil becomes wetter because of um, rainfall, we know the water fills the air spaces between the soil particles. Now, if the, uh, the soil does become waterlogged, it can mean that um, there's less oxygen available to the roots. Now, root hair cells, we know, or any root cell, requires oxygen for aerobic respiration inside its mitochondria, and that produces ATP. Now, we know ATP is needed by cells for many processes like protein synthesis, DNA replication, and also active transport. So, if root cells do not receive enough oxygen they can't make sufficient ATP now if the root hair cells in particular do not have ATP it means they can't absorb minerals like nitrate ions phosphate ions or even magnesium ions so without these essential minerals the root hair cells and the roots are just not going to survive so the plants might even die off we can also talk about the temperature of the soil so if you've got deforestation with the trees and the plants removed, the soil tends to stay wetter for longer. And that's because there's no root systems to absorb the water. So wet soil is um, it takes a longer time to warm up. So it's going to stay cooler for a longer period of time. Now, this is going to uh, reduce the rates of seed germination because uh, seeds need to reach a certain temperature to be able to germinate. So if the, the soil remains colder for longer, seeds are... Uh, find it more difficult to be able to germinate. We also know the cold soil is going to have a knock-on effect for root activity and that's because the cells of the roots um, they have enzymes inside them that perform certain or catalyze certain biochemical reactions. So if the enzymes are at a lower temperature they've got less kinetic energy so there's less successful collisions with the substrates, less enzyme substrate complexes and less product. So two knock-on effects of wetter soil through deforestation it's colder for longer because it can't heat up to the same extent that reduces seed germination and it also reduces the activity of the root cells now another consequence is to do with denitrifying bacteria so bacteria called pseudomonas now we know pseudomonas is a denitrifying bacteria that grows under waterlogged conditions So when the soil is waterlogged and there's, there's a lot of water in between the soil particles, there's also a lack of oxygen in the soil that promotes the growth of this obligate anaerobe. Now, denitrifying bacteria absorb nitrate ions from the soil and they convert them into nitrogen gas, which gets released back into the atmosphere. So if pseudomonas is allowed to grow because of the increased uh, water content of the soil, because there are no roots to absorb the water, the nitrate content of the soil decreases, so the soil becomes less fertile. So that is the, the growth of denitrifying obligate anaerobe bacteria, such as Pseudomonas, 
waterlogged soil promotes their growth it takes in the nitrates from the soil and it makes it less fertile so that's why deforestation can make soil much less favorable for new vegetation to start growing because of these bacteria